Instant Pot accessories. What do you have to have and what's a nice to have? I'm Urvashi and my blog is twosleevers.com and today I'm going to walk you through all of the accessories that I have tried over the last four or five years and the ones that I think are worth having versus not. You see this huge mess? This is how many I have kept after I gave away the ones that I didn't like. So I'm going to clear out this mess because I can't stand this mess in front of me. But let me tell you something. You don't need any of these. You do not need any of these to do a good job in your Instant Pot. But if you do have it, you can do a lot more. So let me clean, clean up this mess and I'll tell you about it. Okay, so first things first, let's start with sizes. Here's a rule of thumb that I use. In a mini, you need something that is no more than six inches across. Mini, six inches. And you don't want something that is more than two or three inches high. Note down these heuristics. Mini, six inch. In a six quart, you don't want anything that is larger than seven inches. And in an eight quart, you don't want anything that's larger than eight inches. So this is my six quart. I don't have an eight quart, so I can't show it to you. But normally, it comes with this pot, okay, stainless steel. Many of us love the fact that our Instant Pots come with stainless steel inserts because of concerns with nonstick, the fact that it stays new looking for decades practically. One of the things that I do like to have from time to time is a nonstick interior. You can get one for um, the six and eight quarts as well as a mini. I have a post that covers all of the accessories that I use and why I like it with links to the exact products that I use and I'm gonna link to that in the description. I also have a post on how to do pot and pot cooking and that is gonna open up a whole new world for you uh, and I'm gonna provide you with a link for that pot and pot cooking as well that you should watch. So back to this, why do I use this nonstick? The nonstick is super helpful if you want to make things like rice uh, and you're a little bit worried about how it's gonna turn out. Um, you're cooking something with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of tomato sauce. Every time anything sticks to the bottom, you get a burn message on the pot and the pot turns itself off. There are a lot of reasons why you want to cook with as little water as you can get away with because the more water you put into it, the more soupy and bland your food is going to taste. The other nice thing about it is that they're super easy to clean. So I do use the nonsticks. Do you have to have it? Depends on what you cook. One of the things that I really like is to have a variety of racks. Your Instant Pot comes with one. I have them in three different heights um, and three different widths. This is the one that I use probably the most often. It's super sturdy, uh, there's no joints in there. Um, it's just very well constructed and I love this one. Um, I use this from time to time if I want something closer to the bottom. Do you need both? You don't. There are different widths, a little bit, so sometimes I might use one or the other. Pick one that is more than, of course Gracie's drinking water because that's what she does when I start. Pick one that is more than uh, a couple inches high so you can get something lifted off. So I will use this higher one if I'm making butter chicken in the bottom. I want to put this on top and I want to put rice on it. This handy one is super easy if you're doing eggs. One, two, three, four, five, six. It'll hold six eggs in here. And if you have two of these, I think they come in a pack of two, you can put six eggs in there. I think you can stack another one on top of it and put six more eggs. This rectangular one, which I will link to, is the only one that is small enough to fit inside an Instant Pot. So you might want one if you want your meatloaf to look like a traditionally shaped meatloaf or if you're making banana bread and you want it to look um, like a traditionally shaped one. Honestly, I very rarely use this. So unless it's an aesthetic thing for you, I would pass on this one. Here, however, are the ones that I use a lot. This is a six by two and this is a six by four. Okay, so this one does really, really well in the mini. It, this one does really well um, in the larger ones when I'm trying to hold just a little bit of something. And this one works really well if I'm trying to make uh, more rice. For example, if I'm trying to make two cups of rice rather than just one, uh, if I'm trying to um, steam a custard in here, then this deeper pan works really, really well. By the way, most of the stuff that I'm showing you here, I also use in my air fryer because although I love stuff, uh, and I love little gadgety things. I have no room in my house, which I'm sure is true for you as well, my kitchen. If you guys could see what's behind the camera, it would be horrifying. This is uh, aluminum. It transfers heat really, really well. Stainless steel transfers heat really, really well. With glass, here's the deal with glass. Glass takes a long time to come 
up to heat. Once it does, it retains the heat better uh, than some of the other materials. The problem with glass is that it's going to delay your cooking, so you're going to have to add time if you use glass. The other problem with glass is that we are used to, in the United States, we're used to thinking of Pyrex as being um, heat proof, and not all Pyrex is borosilicate safe. Someone once said that anything in Pyrex all caps is safe and Pyrex in lowercase is not safe. I don't know if that's true. All I know is I've had, oh, I don't know, 30 years of cooking in pressure cookers and I have never had good luck with glass. Things don't cook evenly for me. Uh, it's more likely to break. If you're a novice, please just stay away from glass until you know, you know, you feel a little bit more comfortable. I've wasted like an entire pot of uh, pork Szechuan soup because I put it in a glass um, a Pyrex thing and it broke and I opened it and there was broken glass all into my soup. Very disappointing. The other nice thing to have is silicone baskets and silicone trivets. I love silicone in the Instant Pot. The reason for that is it's really, really easy to wash. Pretty much the steam in the Instant Pot is gonna clean your, your silicone. It doesn't absorb heat nearly as much, so lifting this out is a lot easier. What's gonna burn your hand is not the the ears on this, but the steam coming out from the pressure cooker. So I feel like it's it's really, really safe. So then other nice thing about silicone is that you can cut it to fit. So when I bought this, this was a lot larger and I wanted something that would fit in my mini. So my husband actually took a pair of scissors. See how this is open like that? He took a pair of scissors and he cut it so that it'll fit in here. This sling has, this thing is a sling. It's not just a trivet. So say you were making cheesecake or you were making my gyro recipe. Um, you can fasten this up top and then when it's time to lift it, let's say your cheesecake is sitting over here, you can just lift it like this and bring it out. One thing to note about this is that as you see, there's no clearance. It sits flat pretty much on the bottom with just like a little bit of a lift off of it. I actually really love this basket. Um, there's, they're not that many like it. I found it on Amazon um, and I use this quite a bit. So what I love about this is like, for example, I can do eggs. I can do a whole head of cabbage uh, chopped up in there. I can do a lot of different things and it comes straight out. This will not fit in your mini. You cannot cut it because you would have to cut the bottom. Um, but for the six quart and an eight quart, this is actually very handy and very sturdy. And then of course you've seen these little baby food egg molds. So you can make um, egg bites in here. Uh, I make wontons, a low carb wonton recipe in here. You can do that. Um, it's really good for being able to steam. The one thing I, I, I don't I, I get that it's a shape issue, but this, the fact that it has seven, I just don't like. I, like, I want something with six and I, I realize you can't do that, but the seven thing is really weird. I don't like it. Anyway, a lot of people like this do not use the lid uh, in the Instant Pot if it's plastic. Which one do I think is a must have versus a nice to have? I think something like this with a small lift off of there and handles um, is a, a, a very, very nice to have. I would say must have if you're gonna steam anything. These are nice to haves. I don't think you have to have them. Let's talk about cheesecake and cake containers. Hi, sweetheart. There's my puppy. Hi, baby. Hi, hi. Um, there's nothing to eat today. This is a very, very small bunt pan. The advantage of using a bunt pan when you're steaming eggs or making a small cake or making cornbread from the little packet is that this middle bar transfers heat and that heat helps the middle of the cake or the cornbread to cook. So it's actually a really, really handy thing. Uh, it speeds up your cooking and it gives you more even cooking. This is a very tiny pan. Let me show you a six cup pan so you know what it looks like. This is six cups, this is three cups, okay? Look at that. If you have a six quart or an eight quart, this six cup God, my ears are ringing from that. If you have, if you have a, um, what was I saying? Oh, if you have a six quart or an eight quart, this six cup bun pan will fit in there just fine, as you see. Okay, so these spring form pans, the way it works is it has a clip on the side and that allows this to come off. Why do you need one of these? It's really handy to have if you're making cheesecake. Super handy to have. It comes in different sizes, right? Six inch, eight inch, seven inch, we've talked about. Um, you also get little pattern ones. This is a one made by a friend of mine, Debbie's Home Cooking, so you can find that on the Home Pressure Cooking or Debbie Do. You can find those. I wanna show you another one that looks the same, but actually functions quite differently. So one of the big problems with these is that no matter how tight the seal, they seem to leak. If you put eggs, you're gonna have eggs at the bottom. If you put liquidy batter, you're gonna have a little bit at the bottom. 
there's a couple of ways to get around it. One is you can put uh, aluminum foil or parchment or something at the bottom uh, and that'll keep it from leaking. Two, you can wrap this in aluminum foil on the outside and so even if it leaks, it'll capture everything in there. When you put aluminum foil on the outside though, you're retarding the cooking. Aluminum foil um, is gonna prevent the heat from transferring, so you're gonna have to adjust time. And my food stylist, Monica, said, um, you know, you need one with a, a lip that protrudes. So, let me show you how this one is. And I'll leave to this one as well. You see this? This has a lip on the outside. The advantage of this lip on the outside is A, you know exactly where this goes, and B, there's a little lip to catch uh, cheesecake batter if it leaks. These one piece ones are less likely to leak. You just have to be really, really careful to um, grease up the inside extremely well. So I use a silicone brush to get into all the nooks and crannies, and um, that's how I do it. Now, of course, for a cheesecake, something you want to unmold, you're not gonna be able to do it with that. Okay, so of all of these, which ones do I use the most? Honestly, I have a couple of great cheesecake recipes on the blog. One is just a regular keto cheesecake and the other one is a keto lemon ricotta cheesecake. You can make either of those with real sugar, you can make them with whatever sweetener you want. Um, so I'll use it for that. But the ones that I use the most of the molded ones are these two. This one, for example, will fit in a Ninja air fryer, a Gourmia air fryer, etc. So if you just wanna make a little bit of cornbread or something, you could do one of those. One thing I have not yet mentioned are extra ceiling rings. Many people buy an extra ceiling ring because they think that their old ceiling ring takes on flavors. I'm on the fence about that a little bit. If I have a ceiling ring that gets some kind of a strong um, smell in it, I have found that uh, first you can dishwash it. If the dishwashing doesn't help, then you want to take, believe it or not, denture tablets. I had to go out to buy denture tablets just for this because these are my real teeth. Um, but you can buy denture tablets and uh, soak it in that overnight and the smell goes away. And if all of that doesn't work, you, after you've done it through the dishwasher and the denture tablets, put it outside in the sun and the smell from the silicone goes away. Now, one thing you need to be very careful about. Instant Pot will tell you that if you use a non-Instant Pot ring, it voids your warranty. Can I be honest with you? I have no idea what the Instant Pot warranty is. But if you're concerned about that, you should look that up and buy one that's an Instant Pot seal. All right, so the next thing, a lot of people love to make yogurt. I just finished an entire post on how to make yogurt, Instant Pot, slow cooker, oven, and countertop yogurt. But a lot of people love to make it in the Instant Pot. I love to make it in the Instant Pot. I have found a few things to be useful for that. I have a Vietnamese yogurt recipe that requires you to mix everything in a bowl and then just pour it into jars and put the jars into the Instant Pot and they set. You don't have to heat it, heat it. it's a cold start recipe. You don't have to do anything fancy, mix everything for it. But if you're a beginner and you've never made yogurt, that's a really, really good recipe to start. It has a lot of sugar, but it is so delicious. These bottles, I have two kinds of bottles. This is a Borromeo one, again, it, it'll be linked. And this cute little one, um, these are Donvier. Uh, they're really, really handy for yogurt. You can put a little bit of jam or something at the bottom, you can pour the milk on top, and these will fit very, very comfortably inside your Instant Pot, and they're really good um, serving sizes. One of the other things that I use with yogurt is a glass lid. This is especially important if you are fermenting something in there. So for example, you can ferment dough for a bread, for sourdough bread, for example. When I'm doing a slow cooking in the Instant Pot, um, I use this a lot. So a glass lid is, a, again, a nice to have, don't have to have. This is a way to make Greek yogurt. So now my container is small because I don't make a lot of yogurt at a time. I'm just making it for the two of us. But what this does, um, I have two, two things I use this for. One is Greek yogurt and the other one is a thing called labme, which is just much, much thicker Greek yogurt. It's like little balls of yogurt um, that you can season and I have a recipe for that. So the advantage of this, so here's how you would make it. You would make your yogurt in the Instant Pot. After eight to 10 hours when it's set, you will put it in the fridge overnight. Don't drain it before you put it in the fridge overnight. Give the water uh, a time to get reabsorbed in it. Then the next day, what I do is I pour the yogurt in here. This is a mesh screen. This mesh screen allows, it's a very fine mesh screen. It allows the water to drip in here. And it just keeps dripping, keeps dripping. If I take it out in about eight hours, I have nice thick Greek yogurt. And then I have another thing, which is not strictly speaking an Instant Pot accessory, but it's something I use. This is actually something to make tofu with. I don't make tofu. I do make paneer, which is an Indian cheese. So it's a formed cheese. So basically you would heat up cream or half and half 
with a little bit of souring agent like uh, vinegar or lemon juice. You would cook it under pressure really quick and then you drain, uh, you drain it through, you line this with cheesecloth and you pour all of the milk solids and the whey into this and the whey starts to drip and then you press this down and at the end of it what you have is a really nice square block of cheese. One, one other one I forgot is this jabi. I call these my alligator ones. When you're taking something hot out of the Instant Pot, you do not want to use a cloth towel or an oven mitt that's cloth. And the reason for that is that steam and heat is going to penetrate through the cloth and burn your fingers. I've had this happen. So use little silicone ones like that and just, you know, you can pick up whatever in there. Here's my list of things I really use a lot. A rack, a nonstick container, a steamer basket-y thing, uh, either this one or the deep one, but I like this one a lot. You want a container, six feet, uh, sorry, six feet, ooh, uh, six inches by two or six inches by three. Some kind of a formed one-shaped bun pan, either the three cup or the six cup, and then a cheesecake pan. Okay, if you're trying to save money and you're only gonna buy two or three things, what would I buy? I would buy a rack, a deeper rack, and a container, that's it. All right, that was a lot. I don't know about you, but my head is kind of spinning with all these accessories. And guess what? I have to now put them back. You guys can go on with your day. I have to put all this mess back that I just brought up. That was my brief recap, not so brief. That was my recap on Instant Pot accessories that are available, that are nice to have, and that are must have if you want to do pot and pie. I'm Urvashi. My blog is twosleevers.com. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe. I should have said that earlier. Please subscribe. I'm Urvashi. Thank you for watching.